Welcome to Billings Clinic Health Magazine. I'm Leslie Blair, and joining me are two friends and associates who are going to talk about Yes for Kids campaign, uh, why this is so important for our community, and a little bit of history. Um, it's my pleasure to we welcome Karen Moses, who's a longtime friend and classmate of mine from this very building, Lincoln. Lincoln Center. We go back a ways, Moses. I, I know, but my hair is... Yeah. <laughs> we do. We go back a ways. I but don't know what happened to your hair. In the 60s. It didn't that, happen to my that hair. Was, that, was <laughs> years, <laughs> that was years okay, before, before, before uh, some of you uh, kind people at both hospitals <laughs> and this community jumped in to help with our school mill levies and bonds. My, my hair turned gray. <laughs> now, now that you're on, I, I, it's not going to fall out. I'm, I'm looking for it to go back brown and That's great. bring a little youth back well, to our community. you look fabulous. Thanks, Leslie. And uh, Luke Cobalt, who is the Strategic and Marketing and Planning uh, Director at Billings Clinic, as well as the co-chair of Yes for Kids campaign. So um, thank you, Luke, for joining us today. Happy and to for here participating. Mm -hmm. I know you have uh, two darling girls that are in our school system. Mm -hmm. I do at Boulder Elementary, third and fourth grade. So you're in Very the fun. thick of this mm -hmm. and Karen I think your kids have graduated out of the system. All three have graduated and uh, um, we have a professor at the Arizona State. Um, Brandy graduated from Stanford uh, Timer's working for a dot-com in Seattle, and uh, Mike and I just cannot be more proud of the education that our kids got in the school system. So even That's though awesome. our awesome. children no longer attend, uh, it was by far the best thing I think this community uh, has going for it, and we're so thankful that they've risen to the <laughs> challenge of the last few years and I think really surpassed a lot of the hopes and dreams many of us had uh, to see our elementary schools uh, take flight. And schools. what's yes. happened in the last four years is impressive, um, much, much to be proud of. If you haven't been to Broadwater and McKinley, for those of us that attended then, uh, it's amazing. And the new middle school will lift the burden of uh, 20 some elementary schools that uh, found themselves 25 percent of our classes uh, too crowded to meet state standards. Uh, even if we had passed levies to hire teachers at that time, we didn't have rooms uh, to put them in. So what, what has happened in the last yes. four years is monumental, and I'm just hoping we can keep supporting and, and uh, continue in that progress. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned that history because it was uh, 2013 and, and before then that we were talking about bonds and levies and yes, a great deal of money was pledged for uh, taxes to support those buildings and meeting the need at the time. However, Luke, yes. <laughs> explain why we are coming back needing sure. more money. Sure, and as part of the conversation, and one of the teachers that are helping us on the campaign explained that you know bonds are for building and levies are for learning. So the levy dollars are really going to, to more programmatic initiatives. And in fact, the the two there's two levies for this cycle: one for the high school and one for the elementary. And they're really looking at adding 31 and a half new staff. Primarily, those are going to be new teachers that are going to help both our gifted and talented programs as well as those who need a little bit of uh, assistance in reading and, and, and math, as well as uh, investing in science, technology, engineering, and math programs, STEM. Uh, so it's it's really exciting what we're able to do. And, you know, as, as Karen mentioned, the, the jumping on the momentum that we had for building the space, now let's fill it with the knowledge and, and that we can and the expertise to really help our kids grow. Well, absolutely. And you put it in a way that I understood, which was helpful. Um, I think you called it the annual upkeep. It, it is. I, I've come to liken it to bonds. Um, bonds are like the mortgage on our homes. They are the house payment mm -hmm. that pay for the structure in the building. But our mortgage, our home house payment, does not pay for the living that takes place inside uh, the home. It's what makes that house a home. And for our schools, the bonds, the bonds built the structure. The levies 
are, I chuckle when Mike, Mike says, didn't we just, didn't we just pay that bill? Didn't we just <laughs> give a lot of money to the schools? Uh, yes, we made the house payment, mm -hmm. but it's the ongoing uh, care, support, consistent, uh, annual assessment, which it's the only tool that the legislature gives us mm -hmm. to assess our schools. It's the local control part that we all ask for. The state pays between 70 and 80 percent. The local picks up the rest, but we we cannot do it without a vote of the public. So it's it's what makes education go. It's it's the heart and soul of your district. Bozeman, um, there's always some interest of late, Bozeman's Airport, Bozeman's this, Bozeman's that. Bozeman passed 18 levies in a row in their community, annual. They, it's just an annual thing. When you and I were growing up, we had this conversation. Did our parents do this when we were growing up? I don't remember that we had the struggle with the campaigns. No. But, but we, we did have um, a, a vote that it was an assumption that you know, then, then we get into an anti-tax conversation on occasion and it makes I, well, it a challenge. I, and I think Karen uh, touched on an important note here is, is that I don't think many people, I certainly didn't, sorry if I hit the mic, I <laughs> certainly didn't uh, until I got into this program uh, understand how the schools are funded. Uh, you know, you'd think that they're funded at their needs, but it's really not. There's an expectation that 20% or more is raised locally. And, and communities like Bozeman, Missoula and Great Falls, they, they've they've had this figured out and, and, and so they They've been able to 18 in a row. We're, we're, we have a pattern going too, Karen. Yes, so we do. We're going to keep that going. They, so it's, fa it's very important that people understand that, that there is an expectation for local. Impact. Now, the Yes for Kids campaign, <clears throat> we've, we're familiar with that term, but this year we're reaching beyond just the school district to uh, elementary or the, the boundaries. Correct. So there's some additional support that's needed. There is. So there are two levies that are going to be on the ballot, one for the elementary schools and then one for the high schools. So we have not passed a high school levy since 2007. We had a technology levy that was in there, but there was, I think, one failed effort along the way. But the high school represents more than just school district, too, because there's uh, our, our, our partner and neighboring communities such as Lockwood, Elder Grove, Elysian, those school districts also feed into our high school. And so, so those are the additional. Really goals. important. Important yes. to, to fund those high schools. I, I think if you've watched the board over the years and the superintendent, the um, when this superintendent, his first month on the job was called to the Office of Public Instruction uh, in Helena and with the notice that 25 percent of us were in classes too crowded to meet state standards, his charge as he drove back to Billings is what is the plan and what, what will we do? How do we address this issue? The tsunami was hitting our elementary schools, mm -hmm. uh, and that was the most immediate need. I think they were very conscious mm -hmm. not to, at that time, as much as the high schools also had a need, it wasn't uh, as high a, a profile as the elementary, so they, they worked on the elementary, and that was the plan that came first. Mm -hmm. Our high schools took a back seat, mm -hmm. quite yeah. frankly, since 2007, and if any of you who Visit, visited uh, a high school lately. Um, that tsunami is headed their direction. The redistricting still has mm -hmm. our high schools at 97, 98, 99 percent capacity. <coughs> Um, Correct, and 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 it's uh, as Kara mentioned, the, the the kids who are overcrowding the classrooms in elementary will be doing the same at the high school level. Um, but it's 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 really important that you look at how we, we've done over the course. Yeah. So that tsunami was, I think it was 96 of our classrooms were out of accreditation. That the additional fi or the bond financing was able to bring that down to 25. We still have some, so that's why part of the elementary school levy this time is going to be uh, hiring. 10 classroom aides that are going to help with that um, instructor to student ratio so we meet accreditation standards as well as the redistricting all of that will and and once both middle schools come online then those overcrowding issues will be down so the plan is in place a, a, as we move forward to, to address that tsunami I think um, in 30 years that I've watched Mike and I sat down last night we've had 10 superintendents in, in the last 30 years. Wow. More has been accomplished in these four years, in the three years since the community decided we can do this. Uh, the, 
over 90 percent they were shooting for 70 to 80 but over 90 percent of the work they've staggered over the last three years so that the work could stay local within billing correct the the construction our own neighbors friends and neighbors builders and contractors if you want to talk a lot of pride in what's taken place mm -hmm. uh, they really shot the high bar there they the the work they did with the reserves to get a bond rating uh, the that has saved, saved over millions, 20 right? million dollars over the life of the bonds uh, because of the, the work they have done, energy savings. I mean, mm -hmm. there have been all, the, the list is, is long and phenomenal, but I hope that the community, um, we've had some rocky times. The hair got well, gray, but Karen, we have know, come so, so far these last years. I am so glad you're mentioning some of the historical, and yeah. I neglected to mention that you were on the school board for 10 years. 10 years. Not only did you grow up here, go to school here, your dad was a teacher <laughs> when I was there, yeah. he was a coach, and your family has been invested in the school system here, and now you have been an advocate for education all these years, and you've seen some rocky times, and it's it's just not it's not fair. Every child deserves right. a superior and excellent education. Well, and I think every family, every community, mm -hmm. you face those times and yeah. what you do with them. Watching what the staff, uh, the community as a whole, the what what they have done when they gathered forces. Yes. We are so thankful to have the hospitals, the chamber, the teachers union, uh, the community gather with this, but the ability to to come together mm -hmm. and and keep going. Yeah, uh, I think is, Karen mentioned it. The, the, all of the right people are coming together. I mean, obviously, uh, the I didn't mention earlier, but my co-chair on this campaign is Darren Walker, who's the vice president of human resources at St. Vincent Healthcare. So you have both of the medical communities within uh, in Billings coming together because it's it is mm -hmm. so important you have the teachers and the administrators same voice coming together it's all for our kids and for mm -hmm. uh, having them have the opportunity to be as successful as we can possibly make it for them. Luke talk about how this impacts our community um, if if I say you know my son's graduating this year I don't really need to support that anymore he's he's out of here how how does that um, how does this can impact our community. It's an ongoing investment. I think I think that's one kind of, in my opinion, a little bit short-sighted way to look at it. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm before my kids got into it. Obviously, I have a vested interest. They're there, and I want them to have the access that they need. But really, having STEM programs is not just good for our community to have a high education. It's good for our nation. For us mm -hmm. to be competitive on a global scale, we need to have the right. Um, skill sets in place and we are trailing many many uh, countries around the world in regard to science and technology and so that's a big component of this I think the it's viewing it as an investment in the future they're gonna be future leaders in our mm -hmm. in our or in our community they're gonna be our friends they're gonna be our partners along the way and so we need to make sure they have the best road and path in front of them absolutely and I know um, as far as business recruitment when we have physicians coming in what do they ask that's the other part of, of, yeah. of all these elements coming together you have the healthcare community the teachers and 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 the administration you also have the business community the chamber has been very supportive mm -hmm. of this effort uh, big sky economic development they know that as we're recruiting businesses and as we're recruiting individuals one of the first three questions I was going to be, how are the school the schools? Yeah. I have a family. I want to feel comfortable. I know in the medical community and, and talking with, with Darren, who does this uh, from a recruitment, we're competing with Duke. We're competing with Mayo Clinic to bring these national um, physicians in, in into our community. And so we need to have a product that they're, they're going to be interested mm -hmm. in. And schools is always top of mind mm -hmm. when they ask uh, to learn more about our, our community. When we were first asked, um, when they came forward with the strategic plan and, and the community was asked uh, to support, um, I was pleased that mm -hmm. at that time they were very clear that it is a multi-year process mm -hmm. and the, the buildings were phase one. I, I bring them in phases mm -hmm. and the ongoing support and levies continuing um, to, I think build, we, we talked about trust, we had the rocky times, what this community has done to rebuild that, um, what they've been able to do the last four years. Uh, for me, 
I just can't help but say if ever there is a time to, to continue support, uh, it is now. I, I can't imagine they could have done any more. They have done the last four years to, to rebuild and do and our ability now to really, really make a difference and get back on that path of consistent support for our schools is possible for us. I think it is too and, and I think you mentioned an important part. The, the details and the programs being supported in these levies both at the elementary and the high school level, there was a 12-month process where uh, our school administrators met with over 70 groups, uh, teachers, parents, all of the business community, uh, faith-based community, etc., to develop that strategic plan over the next five years or so it is. So every element within this levy is a result of that process. So this is what we as community members are asking of our schools. So it's not just the school saying, here's what we need. It's saying, we want you to invest and we want you to put in programs that are going to help both the gifted and talented students and those who are having a little bit of difficulty keeping up. They're also investing more in mental health. Uh, I, I don't think it's um, a, a surprise to anybody as you see the news over the state of Montana. Montana has had the highest suicide rate, for, or has at least been in the top three for as long as I know. And so this is going to put resources in our school system that are going to help kids in, in, in distress and who are struggling. And so that's another key important part of this work. Well, it's not just a wish list. No. You know, it's no. the strategic plan sounds like it's very well thought out. It's me, it's not just meeting, you know, gaps, but it's it's making it whole. And it's it's putting teachers where they need to be, mental mm -hmm. health workers where they need to be. Luke, you mentioned a statistic at the press conference that was alarming about yeah, the Centers for Disease Control put out an, an a survey, it's not annual, I believe it's every two or three years, where they ask high school kids, have you ever attempted suicide? And for Billings, and it goes down to the, the county level, so for Yellowstone County, one in seven of our kids replied that they have attempted, not thought about it, attempted suicide in the past 12 months. It's very alarming. And to yes. get some mental health workers in, the guidance counselors can't do it all. They're not mental health uh, workers. So to get people who are trained in the yes. schools is going to be great. And reducing those overcrowded classrooms allow more one-on-one -on -one time between our teachers and if so there the is a classroom. teacher can aid, actually know a student. They can see if there's bullying going on. They can actually see if there's an, uh, an incident brewing that we can maybe intervene before it gets too bad. And a portion also included in this levy are, is staff development and, and training some things you know, sometimes they're not as visible as uh, the actual hiring of the teacher mm -hmm. and the materials that go with it, but our ability to change with the times. Uh, we're talking statistics. <laughs> Mike's n new job, uh, the, the judge has been on for two years, <laughs> and in that time, after 30 years of legal practice, uh, he thought he was prepared for just pretty much about everything, but the dependent neglect cases that have come before mm -hmm. the court have doubled in the last two years, doubled. So, you know, our ability, when they say it takes a village to educate a child, uh, our ability to rally those troops, um, well, you know, put, 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 put that, those issues forward, we can, we can do it. We've all been blessed uh, coming through mm -hmm. our school system in, in Billings to, uh, to benefit from that and we can well, there are many families that are struggling. I yeah. mean, yes. the, that free breakfast and the backpack meals for kids, sometimes those are the only nourishment and, and yeah. hot meal they may get all day. So to have adequate staffing and people and aids for that one-on-one, -on -one, just, you know, if somebody's having a difficult day or they haven't been fed, it's, it's critical to meeting mm -hmm. the needs of education. Um, Luke, do you want to kind of go through the laundry list of all, all the things, again, that are going to be provided? Sure, you're going to test my memory here. <laughs> okay, okay, you're yeah. pretty good. I, I know I may, if I, if I leave something out I'm here, just really please, glad she asked uh, you. Uh, <laughs> go for it. Because there, there is quite a bit that goes into yeah. this. So at the high school level, I mentioned the two mental health professionals that we will have um, so that we can have early um, mm -hmm. intervention if, if things arise. So that's, that's really important. There's also a number of teachers that are going to be uh, doing... Uh, college co-credit yep. portion so uh, so I think this is currently only available at senior uh, if I recall so this will have somebody at each of the high That's schools that you can get earn college credit mm -hmm. while taking classes mm -hmm. at, in your senior year so so those are kind of two of the key points of the of the high school levy it's also going to just add 
additional teachers so that they can provide more periods for classes. So that will reduce some of the, the, the crowd overcrowding burden. And then uh, obviously we all saw the photos of the textbooks, et cetera, in, in, the, in the Gazette. There's a definite need to, to uh, invest and improve in some of the materials. So that's pretty much the high school level. Um, at the elementary, we are, I mentioned we're going to add new teachers to further address the overcrowding issue as well as 10 um, classroom aides. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the goal there for, for two is really to keep those numbers down mm -hmm. as well as provide more one-on-one -on -one opportunity because the goal of these are to have, provide a safe, supportive, and, and, and challenging um, school system for our kids. Um, also in the elementary is more investment in gifted and talented programs, mm -hmm. uh, more math reading intervention for kids who are struggling maybe to keep pace with their, with their peers, um, and, and additional focus on STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. And that's, as I mentioned earlier, was the kind of the key area where we're falling behind globally, not just in Billings, but mm -hmm. this is a global challenge that even President Obama, President Obama has put out on the table. We need to, we need to get better. You get an A. That was, I, I was, yeah, I, I'm trying to think, what did I forget? No, he, I, okay. you, you did superbly. The, we, we haven't talked a lot about the advanced placement and uh, dual credit course offerings. Correct. Um, and knowing when those students, Timer benefited from our youngest, uh, took the AP, the calculus, the math, and the history course, I believe, and college credit then, when those students, he, he had a quarter of uh, coursework under his belt when he got to college, that assisted, he was able to get through in four mm -hmm. years. Um, Which you can't Right, the, right, there are places, right, there are uh, places in the country uh, where students earn up to one, two years worth of college credit by the time they're done in high school, mm -hmm. which is a huge savings for the f families and uh, community. It, at a time sometimes when those kids might be losing interest in high school and be really antsy to get out, uh, if, if that carrot is there mm -hmm. uh, that, that leads them into, um, it, it makes college uh, more attainable, Right. Uh, affordable mm -hmm. and and prepares keeps, them. It yeah. prepares them, but it keeps that interest level going, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's 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 really a gift to our community. And with the colleges that we have right here, mm -hmm. and teachers willing to train, they can attend high school and receive that credit. That's awesome. It's really good. Luke, let's talk about the money. What is this going to cost? So between the two of them, it's just a right around $2 million. So uh, that's the total funding that will be raised. But for a homeowner, I think is probably the most uh, appropriate way to break this down. If you have a taxable value of $200,000 on your home, it costs a, a few pennies more than $26 a year. So combined both levies are about two I think it's two dollars and twenty two cents per month on a two hundred thousand dollar home mm -hmm. and that's the taxable value mm -hmm. so uh, the statistic I wrote if you could sell your house for two hundred thousand dollars then the taxable value is about a hundred and ten so it's that taxable value okay that is is assesses what that dollar amount will be I think in a part of keeping the trust argument that we've been trying to make about what they've done the um, the last go round, I think our current payment yeah. is about two dollars less uh, than what they were anticipating, uh, and I, I should yes. have the figures. I shouldn't yes. have even started this part of the conversation, mm -hmm. but I know each time they have put that at the highest mm -hmm. amount uh, that it, it was going to be, under? and it's come in under quite a, every substantially, quite a bit, substantially yeah. under every time. Well, that's good to know because so, if people are saying because it seems like we just had this campaign, didn't I just do that? So. We're, we're coming in a little under on that, and two dollars and twenty two cents a month. month. It's not even, you know, that's the high bar. A huge. That's it's not even a huge sacrifice that I think most of us in our budgets, um, and I, I don't mean to offend anybody, but I think per month you can you can make that happen. Just maybe just a little adjustment. It's it's uh, for some it's probably not noticeable, but. Um, it's pretty affordable and it's money that goes a long way toward and there is a huge return on absolutely that, on that, I won't say minimal but on the smaller investment right. the return on investment is, is uh, and astounding. by doing something like this that's actually a modest increase two million something um, it it helps us down the road so we're not coming back and going mm -hmm. oh now guess yes. what it's 10 million yeah I think the biggest challenge we mm -hmm. faced last time were 
we had several rounds that we failed. tried and failed, mm -hmm. and and then the issues compound. Mm -hmm. um, we are we are so much closer to being yes. where we need to be, and it's not unlike your home. Any investment, if if you if you keep it up, yes. it's you pay me now or <laughs> several I'm, times later. At, being, being involved now at, on a, on a, as a co-chair, I'm learning a lot more of the history. I was supportive of it as a community member before, uh, but it, it really was almost dire. Yeah. that we were so far behind and we had deferred investment in our schools for so long that the last two efforts for Yes for Kids were, were not optional yeah. <laughs> if we wanted to keep going. Now, what I like to say about these levies, they're, they're building on that momentum and they're, they're progressing. They're not catching up, they're progressing. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's really important to think of as an investment of $2.22 a month that we're really moving our district forward. We're, we're, we're no longer crying yep. about how, how bad it is. We're, we're grabbing the bull by the horns. Okay, so ballots are gonna be in the mail People should receive them on April 16th. Okay, they and are, we must be in by? They must be in by May 3rd, 8 p.m. on May 3rd. So okay. what we're asking is everybody to, so we have a campaign and we're knocking on doors. If you vote right away, we'll know not to bug you. So go out there, once soon as you get your ballot, open it up, vote yes, send it back in. We want to do that as soon as we can. Okay, so you've convinced everybody that's watching, this is fabulous, do you need volunteers, do you need help? We do have a very good crew of volunteers. Karen is really a, an important part of that. Um, we always need people to make phone calls. We always need What's people What's the website? To, it's uh, uh, yesforbillingskids.org. Right. Yesforbillingskids.org. Yes. Or if you remember the glass building that helped with the last campaign, it's been leveled. Yes. So the BEA has offered its main floor. It's right across the parking lot from Lincoln Center. If you'd like a yard sign, if you can like mm -hmm. to come and so walk. the BEA office. Yeah. BEA yes. office, mm -hmm. 4 to 8, Monday through Thursday. Our, our doors are open. We welcome volunteers. Treats and training always available. Um, pick up a yard sign. Pick up a get yard your sign. Mail, get, mail in your ballot right away, and the phones yes. will stop ringing and the door knocking. But mm -hmm. there's a great force. We're running short of time, so I just thank you both for being here. What a great effort. And we don't have a lot of time, but we're going to yes. get this passed. Yes. We have to. We yeah. have to. We have we to. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you very much. <laughs> a treat. Appreciate it.